and uh, welcome to our online worship service for Parkminster United Church, uh, such as it is. Um, so I'm on my own this morning. I already explained why Neil can't um, can't be with us. Um, Heather has just finished the week of vacation, and she's going on a week of study leave now so um so she won't be uh, with us this morning either and we wish her well she will be part of the um festival of homiletics a big annual conference that's uh, usually live but uh, being held virtually this year heather's going to be uh, a part a uh, part of that and we wish her uh wish her wish her well um uh, some of you might know that it's Asian Heritage Month this month um, in Canada, and um, we're going to be having uh, some elements in the service to honor this occasion. Not as uh, not as many as I had uh, hoped because we were going to we were going to use some video for that this morning, um, but still there will be uh, a couple of ways that we honor that uh, this this morning. Just a, a few of the regular announcements uh, this uh, this morning. Uh, if you have an announcement, just uh, type it into the comments, and I will uh, I'll read it out um, uh, today. Uh, so our regular gatherings continue during the week. Our Parkminster Connects gathering, uh, Reverend Fred Monteith uh, hosted this past week, and he's going to continue to host for the next um, three weeks as Heather and I alternate uh, time time away. And that's from 11 to noon on Wednesdays. And can, you can watch your email on Tuesdays for the Zoom link. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, hopefully uh, it'll work uh, uh, by the time Wednesday uh, rolls around. Same goes for our children's gathering on Wednesdays at 1.30 to 2 o'clock. Children and their families are invited to join me for uh, a time to connect uh, with each other and to be church together. And our youth gatherings via Zoom, Fridays at 7 p.m. And we give thanks to Wendy Rudd for helping out with that this coming week. And for that as well, watch your Tuesday, um, your Tuesday email. For those, uh, for those, for those links, I don't see that anybody has typed an announcement. Uh, some new people joining us this morning: um, uh, Sue McQueen, Aaron Todd, Darlene Bassey, Francine. Good, good to have you with you, and we're up to forty people uh, now this morning. And so, friends, we're going to start off just with a bit of a a guided meditation this morning so i invite you to um to close your eyes uh, if you like or just sit back relax um, plant your feet on the ground and to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth I invite you into this time to prepare ourselves for worship. A time to carve out a space in our homes and in our hearts. A time to invite all of who we are into this moment. And so I invite us to begin by noticing the breath, the life force, that comes in through our nose and out through our mouths. And let it fill not just our lungs, but our backs, our stomachs, our legs. Let the breath, feel the breath, going all the way down into your toes this source of life, freely given. There's no intention on our part, none is needed. Be grateful for this gift of breath. Notice the beating of your heart, this wonder of creation, sustaining you without any effort on your part. Another gift, 
abundant grace settle in to this moment. Now become aware of the activity in your brain, all the thoughts, the emotions, the judgments, the joys, the worries. Just observe. Try not to judge. Just become aware. And now imagine that all that brain activity takes the form of a feather and allow it to gently float down past the back of your throat, behind your lungs, past your stomach. Down it floats until it finds rest, until it finds rest perhaps in your belly or perhaps down a little further in your pelvic bowl. Let it settle there. Let all that brain activity find rest there. And in this place of being, this place of acceptance, hear the call of the Holy One. Rest here. Settle into this place where the fear, the anxiety, the uncertainty, the ceaseless brain activity may rest for a while. Rest here. Surrender to the love that will not let us go. Worship in gratitude that we may go out in hope. And so friends, even though we are apart, we are connected virtually and we are connected by the spirit, and so I invite you that if you have a candle with you this morning, to light it at this time. It's a reminder that we are bonded together as the body of Christ, living lights in our communities. And so friends, let's begin this morning with our statement of welcome. In gratitude and in respect, we recognize the First Nations on whose traditional land Park Minster makes its spiritual home, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Neutral. We acknowledge with regret that this history has rarely been respectful, and we commit to just relationship in the present. And along with First Nations everywhere, we recognize the earth as our mother, upon whose water, air, and soil we make our spiritual home, upon whom we depend for our lives and our well-being. And in the midst of a climate crisis, we acknowledge that as a species, we have not acted with respect for our precious planet, and we commit to learning and practicing better stewardship. Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure, and to those who believe, but who are asking large questions. Welcome to visitors and to familiar friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, youth and children, couples and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, gender identities, abilities, and sexual orientations. 
Welcome to each who is seeking an understanding of community and what it means to accompany one another. Welcome as we come together as church in this virtual way. We hold one another in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. And so, uh, friends, our scripture reading uh, this morning is coming from uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. And we had a video of Kevin Smith uh, reading this um, this morning, but um, you'll have to rely on me. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned those who abuse you for your conduct in christ may be put to shame for it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be god's will than suffer for doing evil may these words of faith challenge us and change us May it be so. Amen. Uh, and so before I uh, move on to the reflection this morning, I just, I'm being told that there is a lag between <clears throat> what I say and when it appears on Facebook Live. So um, later on, I'm going to be asking for your prayers of uh, blessing and concern. So please feel free to start typing those. Um, now and um i will go back and uh and read them when we get to that portion of the service so that's first peter and uh, his letter to um that community that early church follow of um of jesus followers and it talks about hope and hope is a hope is a funny thing um what, bring, what brings hope to one person can come across as threatening to someone else. Excuse me. And perhaps we've um, gotten a sense of this with some of them, the tentative steps that Ontario is taking to reopen and some of the bolder and some would say reckless steps to do the same in some parts of the United States. For some, hope for economic well-being is a threat to health. And for others, hope for health is a threat to economic well-being. The community of First Peter seems to know all about this phenomenon. First Peter, whose author is unknown, is a letter written for a community of early Christians that is feeling some pressure from its neighbors because of the way that they're leading their lives. Now, we don't know the specifics, the letter uh, doesn't tell us, but we do know some general characteristics of the societies of the time that rubbed up against Christian ways. Hierarchy and patriarchy defined Rome and its provinces. It was a top-down society ruled by men. Everyone had their place and their role from birth to death. Male, head holds of household, male heads of household were at the top of the social pyramid and female slaves were at the bottom. Now Christianity challenged all of this in their worship. The belief that Jesus came for all was lived out. Women were leaders in the church. 
slaves worshipped with slave masters as equals, and interactions were happening between people in Christian worship that were simply not permitted in other areas of society. The hope of new life in Jesus, the transformation of social relationships based on love, threatened those who benefited from the status quo. And as I thought about the relevance of this for our pandemic times, one image popped into my head uh, almost right away, and I'm sure that you've, it's an image that you've seen. It's a picture of a nurse in scrubs, her hair's up in a ponytail, her mask is on, she's standing silently with her arms crossed, and she's standing in front of the Arizona State Legislature confronting protesters who are unmasked and not respecting physical distancing guidelines, protesters demanding the resumption of regular economic activity, and this was about three weeks ago. Now to me, she represented hope, but to the protesters and others, she was a threat. One state senator accused her of being an actor hired to defend, quote, government overreach. Now, that took some guts on Lauren, Lauren Leander's part. That was her name, Lauren Leander, to stand there in front of hostile people to proclaim a message of hope. It's the kind of courage needed by that community to whom the letter of First Peter uh, was written. The author begins with words of comfort of, and instruction. Who is going to do a thing to you if you do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing the right thing, you're supremely blessed. Don't let yourselves be swayed by public opinion and the false idols of worship. But in your hearts, let the way of Jesus rule as the way to God. In this way, you'll always be ready to respond to anyone who demands from you an answer for the way you live, for the hope that fuels you. Be ready to give an accounting for the hope that is in you. As Lauren Leander says of her actions, this isn't about politics choosing sides. This virus does not discriminate at all, she said. It takes lives from one end of the spectrum to the other. I know it's wishful thinking, but I would just love if we had that common ground with fighting this virus. Now, Lauren Leander's hope, the hope that she expressed, is not a hope explicitly tied to Christian faith, but it has similarities in that it is a hope tied to something larger, more expansive than just herself, love, and the understanding of our vulnerable human interconnectedness and interdependence. Leander stood there and gave an accounting of the hope that was in her, a hope that love can see us through this time. And it's something that we are increasingly being called upon to do, I've been disturbed by images of protesters in Michigan carrying semi-automatic rifles in front of and inside their legislature and saying threatening things about Gretchen Whitmer, the female governor of Michigan. John Pavlovitz, <clears throat> a prominent American pastor 
an activist was similarly disturbed and he had this to say about this image, about those images. He said, <clears throat> he said, black people don't get to do this. Muslims don't get to do this. Latinos don't get to do this. People who don't look like this don't get to do this. Only white people get to do this. This violence is a singular privilege afforded to Caucasian men in America. What I hope and pray is that more white people, especially those who claim to be Christian, will also stand to reject the supremacy and the racism that yields such willful homegrown terrorism. That we will use the unearned currency of our privilege to declare this violence an American, inhuman, and unacceptable. Be prepared to give an accounting of the hope that is in you, even when it is threatening to those who hold power. Now, we're not immune in Canada to the ugliness of racism in, the, in an environment of fear. We're hearing more during this Asian Heritage Month about how Asian Canadians, especially women, fear being out in public. We heard about a particularly vicious attack on someone who stood up to a racist taunter on a Vancouver bus this past week. Be prepared to give an accounting for the hope that is in you. Hope is an abiding, <clears throat> is an abiding presence that drives us out into the world to act in accordance with God's future, a future rooted in love, even if that future brings us into conflict with the society around us. We act out of an inner necessity in the same way that roses bloom. The rose doesn't ask why either or what for, they simply bloom. The same is true of life lived out of the abiding hope that faith places in us. Hope abides in all those who surrender to love. It's not a willful act on our part. For those of us on the Christian journey, we might say that hope abides for all those who put Jesus first in our hearts as the way to God as the way that we experience the holy in the sacred in our lives and in our world. The Christian writer Anne Lamott puts it this way, hope is not about proving anything. It's about choosing to believe this one thing, that love is bigger than any grim, bleak BS that anyone can throw at us. So may we individually and as a society allow hope to threaten our fears and our egos, that we might be a blessing to ourselves, to our families, to our communities and our world, especially the most vulnerable in all those settings, that as, that as we live into this pandemic time, we might be hope for all. May it be so. Amen. And so, friends, we want to continue um, to offer thanks for the many gifts that are being shared uh, during this time, I'm sure that we've all seen uh, examples of gifts uh, being shared this time, uh, whether it's the drawing of uh, the, ch the sidewalk chalk drawings of children that lift our spirits as we walk by, the, 
all those who have responded to the um, the pleas of the um, of the House of Friendship and the Waterloo Region Food Bank to uh, continue to offer support as more and more people are in need, or the the various sewing projects going on in our communities um, to provide uh, uh, PPE um, to um, people who are essential workers in our communities, and we know that gifts continue to be um, uh, coming in to Parkminster <clears throat> as well. And so we give thanks for those gifts, whether they're coming in via PAR, um, via checks that are being mailed in, um, um, or uh, via the uh, Canada Helps link on our website. And we're now also able to give gifts through direct, uh, through direct um, deposit um, through, uh, if you just type in um, Parkminster United Church as the recipient, we're registered for auto deposit, so there's no passwords, no security questions. So we give thanks for those gifts as well. And so let us pray. Wise Mother, loving Father, you have set us in this life to be in a constant cycle of giving and receiving receiving and giving, and in that to know the goodness of life. So bless all that we offer, that our community and our world may be as blessed as us. Amen. So I see that there are a number of uh, blessings and concerns coming and, and so we want to take this time now to reflect and to share the yearnings, the struggles, and the joys um, in, uh, in our lives. So I'm just going to go back and uh, read some of these. Uh, Rob York is typing that they're so thankful the newest member of their family, Willow, who is a husky and shepherd cross, who was rescued north of Winnipeg. Man, a whole buff. So thank you for sharing that, Rob. Uh, Karen Cartmel, good morning, everyone. <laughs> she uh, thanks me for my perseverance this morning and finding a way to join us despite problems with technology. Lonnie, blessings, all residents and staff uh, where Lonnie works have been swabbed and are negative for COVID-19, and she works at Barn Swallow Place in Elmira. Lisa Hicknell. Um, I'll post again. Rob, her husband, just got negative COVID-19 results this morning. He was exposed to a positive person at work, and we are so thankful. Lisa says we share that thankfulness with you. Um, uh, Jocelyn Alexander is very thankful for this technology, which, albeit glitchy at times, allows us to run our big ensemble graduation celebration for five to seven year old students, allowing for them to gather and perform for their audience of friends and uh, family from all over. And also a huge thanks to Neil, uh, who helped her get in touch with his friend who produced an excellent ensemble video for the families. And the link is there, she has shared it. Laura, we are so lucky to have a little backyard and front garden. Flowers are beginning to bloom and buds are opening on the trees. It always feels like it's taking forever to shake off winter, but then all of a sudden there are flowers and leaves and sunshine. Absolutely, Laura, thank you. Kathy Short, happy birthday to Ted Oldfield. Many happy returns, Ted. Uh, Jocelyn, another prayer of celebration. Karen's birthday is tomorrow. Uh, Kieran, a, a lot, big, a lots of love, a huge prayer of thanks for the families of his friends who have come together to help put together a celebration in these challenging times. Uh, Joe Sheldon, in World War II, there were victory gardens, and now we have a virus victory garden, as I call it. So thank you all so much for sharing those prayers of blessing and concern. There's just one more thing that helps us to bring us together as community. So let us pray. God of hope, 
ever living, ever loving. Your spirit knows no boundaries. Your spirit roams freely, not bound by our finite and fleeting languages and cultures. Your spirit is infinite and universal, finding expression in all places, among all creatures, among all cultures. And so we give thanks that you call us together in this way, that by seeking understanding and humility, we come to a greater understanding of and a deeper relationship with your sacred presence. Living God, during this Asian Heritage Month, we give thanks for the contributions of Asian Canadians to the mosaic that is Canada, especially in our, camp, in our context, grappling with a pandemic. We give thanks for Asian Canadians working in public health, hospitals, pharmacies, government, long-term care homes, grocery stores, delivery services, and so many other essential places of work. Holy One, your spirit is often ignored and suppressed when fear manifests in ignorance and hate. And so we pray for all those who feel vulnerable during this time because of their Asian heritage. We pray that your spirit may encourage those of us who are privileged by virtue of our ethnicity to stand and speak and make your spirit known in the midst of pandemic racial backlash. God of hope and promise, as our society contemplates and moves towards ever greater reopening, we hold in the light the tensions at play the tensions at play and at large within ourselves to get back to work, to preserve health, to return to normal, to redefine normal. May our leaders and we ourselves hold these tensions with utmost care, not seeking to escape the ambiguity, but seeking understanding through honest and open listening. Holy One, may we seek and find your spirit as it moves through our lives and calls us during this time. Amen. Friends, the light of Christ that is with us in worship is a light that we are called to carry with us um, in our homes, in our essential workplaces, whatever it is that we may go. May it always lighten our paths, even though they may be shorter paths during this pandemic time. And so, as we carry this light with us, may we also carry this, um, this commissioning and this blessing. We are still in this Easter season, and so we proclaim that Christ is, is risen and keeps on rising. The story is still unfolding. It has become our own. And so as we live into this time, we will be a resurrection people. May the blessing of holy love, that which is beyond all knowing, that which took on our flesh, that which animates all creation, heal us, flow through us, and bring us to wholeness. Amen. And so friends, as we blow out this candle, we see that the smoke rises, and may this smoke be the Spirit of Christ going into our lives. Amen. Oh,